and welcome class to the true and accurate history of the Polynesian Empire, part one. Unfortunately, the program that we were using to film the true and accurate history of the Iroquois League has become corrupted beyond salvaging. So as I attempt to reconstruct the scenario, I thought I'd bring you a short, brief overview of Hawaiian history in the meantime. It's been a, quite a while since we've had a lesson due to these technical difficulties, so it's only fair that we bring you something new. In the early days, Kamehameha was not yet called such. His birth name was Paea, which means hard-shelled crab. His father, by blood, was a chief. His mother was a chiefess. They lived in the Kohala district on the Big Island. When Kamehameha was 14, he accomplished a great feat. Upon the Big Island, there is a rock that weighs 5,000 pounds named the Naha Stone. At the age of 14, Kamehameha lifted that rock and was the only person ever to accomplish this feat. Legend says that the man who lifted it would be a legendary warrior to unite all of the islands. This prophecy was meant to be. Kamehameha was the man who fulfilled it. On the night of his birth, he fulfilled another prophecy as well. The legend claimed that the great king would one day unite the islands and the sign of his birth would be a comet. When he was born, Halley's Comet streaked past the earth. And so a man of greatness was born. The tribes of the Hawaiian Islands were scattered and lacked unity, which they would require in the coming years. Kamehameha used a combination of diplomacy, threats, intelligence, and, when necessary, violence to unite the chiefs under him so that the work could begin of building the great Polynesian Empire. It began with Honolulu, a city which thrived even as it was born, much as Kamehameha himself, which means the Dower One. The first civilization that they met were the Songhai, who claimed to be peaceful people, despite clearly standing in front of a burning city as they met. Regardless, Kamehameha's scouts accepted this at face value and agreed to cooperate with the Songhai for the present. It simply would not do for Kamehameha to allow his plans to be dashed this early on in history simply by disagreeing with a madman. The Incans were next. Pachacuti was not thrilled to meet Kamehameha. As the lands of the Persian Empire were already extensive and blocked his progress north. Regardless, war was not yet declared. This was good, as Hawaii was not a warlike nation, and lacked the martial resources of other nations. What the Polynesians were good at was building, and they did so prolifically, building great structures which came to be called the wonders of the world, most of them concentrated in Honolulu. Other civilizations tried to ape this behavior, but none were quite so prolific as the Polynesians under Kamehameha. This naturally meant that their military suffered, but as they were engaged in the creation of great things, military did not seem like a necessary thing. Many city-states began to emerge from the mists of history. Small groups of individuals who had settled a city but had no ambitions of expanding their reach. Not like Kamehameha, 
who was determined to unite all the islands of the world under one rule. His. An expedition set out and found a new city on the big island, a new center of culture and enterprise, which would be called Samoa. Time seemed to move quickly in these early days. As the Incans attempted to form a pact of cooperation, no doubt to fulfill their own nefarious goals, which Kamehameha wisely refused. You can see here in 680 BC, Samoa was founded. They began work swiftly on creating yet more wonders for the Polynesian Empire. Barbarians came to Hawaiian shores often attempting to find a foothold or secure the rich resources of the Polynesian Empire. Here we can see Askia being stripped of his wealth in order to cooperate with Kamehameha, something that was seen as extremely desirable throughout the world, the Incans following suit, offering up many resources and money simply to work with the great minds of the Polynesian Empire, which had just then created giant pyramidal structures called the Great Pyramids, in which they laid to rest the greatest of their peoples. Most of the world's knowledge could be found at the Great Library in Honolulu, which is why many pilgrims came to visit Another reason why the marauders attempted to block the seaways along the big island. Fortunately, Honolulu's defenses were strong, and with the advent of the Oracle, they were able to foresee when the attacks would come. In 160 AD, Kamehameha was crowned the first king of the Polynesian Empire, and he introduced a new era of progress and piety, as he called it, the two Ps, following the Lua, a traditional religion. He was very strict about it, and though he was an enlightened king, those who went against the tenets of his religion were executed immediately. Here we can see the scout running into danger and attempting to escape. You know, the scouts were confused by this time and beginning to be inflicted with scurvy. Their minds were not as powerful as they once were, and they made a terrible decision, which would prove their end. They were never heard from again, even as roads were developed on the Big Island for the first time, and Moai warriors went off to begin explorations of their own in the north. Having always lived on islands, the Polynesian people were adept at crossing the seas on the most rudimentary of rafts, something which would be unthinkable to most other civilizations, as the ocean was a dangerous place. Time continued to pass with the people of Hawaii focusing on research, cultural growth, and the construction of wonders. Another golden age dawned. The people were thrilled with Kamehameha's rule and his enlightened stance on the pursuit of knowledge and the pursuit of greatness. He planned to build an empire that the world would always remember, not through brute force of arms, but through cultural conquest. Education was important to him. If his people were to be the greatest in the world, they must be educated must have the knowledge and abilities to grow and think and prove their intelligence to each other and to the world. Without great minds, there could be no progress, there could be no great buildings. Nothing new would ever be created, such as Angkor Wat in 1060 AD. Honolulu seemed to be an unstoppable producer of miraculous 
structures. Even as the Hawaiian soldiers explored further islands to the south, seeking out new places to colonize, Kamehameha continued to cooperate with Askia and Pachacuti in their research, proving himself to be a wise king, as well as one focused entirely on the health of his people's minds and on the greater thoughts of the world. Aside from clashes with barbarians on islands to the south, east, and north, there was a peaceful time in the world, at least as far as Kamehameha knew. No one was at war with him, and really, that was the only thing which was important. Askia continued to expand his empire as well, seeking perhaps to outdo Kamehameha. Though he would never have the level of facility with construction that the Polynesians continued to display even into the 15th century. They are showing this simula simulation in a quicker span of time which is why history seems to be moving more quickly than it generally does. The porcelain tower was completed in 1460, leading to even quicker progress for the Polynesian mines. New era became available, dawned on the Polynesian people, which they called the Renaissance. It seemed that history was going their way. The Polynesians would forever be remembered as the constructors of great buildings, the surveyors of great sites, the kings of construction. New settlers struck out to the south, seeking new fertile lands to settle. They found them closer than they had expected. The new island, which they called Key Island due to its unusual shape, was settled with the first city of Tonga. Great seafaring ships began to be constructed and sent out to defend the new settlements and to hunt down the barbarians who continued to plague the waterways around Hawaii. It was a time of great progress, as had all times thus far been in Hawaiian history. There we can see the caravels striking out against the soldiers. The pikemen come under attack from barbarian caravels that are stuck on a small island. They sent word to King Kamehameha, and he suggested that they flee south attempt to find a larger island on which to rest before a caravel could be sent out to help them out. They took his advice, and it would have been good advice. Unfortunately, history had been unkind to the first explorers of the Hawaiian nations. You can see this caravel simply clearing out the waterways. More research with Askia and another Golden Age dawn, 1610 AD. Life was good. Unless you were these guys, who just ran into another barbarian galley and died. They were never heard from again, though some survivors may have washed up on the shores of the island which they had newly discovered at the moment of their deaths. Until next time, all the best.